good morning so in the last class we have discussed uh, regarding some of the basic things that is required for the circuits and networks so uh, some more uh, uh, basics to be learned for analyzing the circuits and networks so let us see today energy sources energy sources basically energy sources are classified into two energy means the sources the materials that is giving energy to do something so energy uh, in electrical engineering basically we are having two types of sources the first one is voltage sources and second one is current sources so these are the two types of sources that is there in the electrical engineering so actually this voltage source again it can be classified into two they are ideal voltage source ideal voltage source and second one is practical voltage source so ideal voltage source means we here we'll be having the internal resistance of the energy source will not be considered it will be the symbolic representation of a ideal voltage source is this one this is plus minus and this will be the terminal out that you are getting here the internal resistance is neglected but in the case of here we can connect the if you are having a load we can connect like this so this will be the normal connection for a ideal a voltage source there is no internal resistance but in the case of a, a practical source if you are seeing the representation the voltage representation the current il versus the voltage if you draw the diagram we will be getting it will be a straight line where if this is the input voltage we are taking it as vs so we will be getting the output side load side we will be getting the voltage as like this the voltage current uh, waveform will be in this manner and this is the zero point so here there is no any internal resistance so in a practical voltage source it is it will be having the practical voltage source representation is in this model it will be having a voltage source vs with internal resistance or impedance internal impedance or resistance it will be in series with the source and then if you are having a load we can connect the load over here in this fashion so this will be the practical uh, uh, voltage source so in practical voltage source the if you draw the graph it will be showing like this so that indicates there is a drop in the as the uh, voltage is decreasing the current will be increasing so this is the uh, two types of voltage sources that you, that we are having and similar way we'll be having current sources current sources is also it is classified into two and it is ideal current source ideal current source and practical current source these are the two types of current sources that you are having and in ideal current source same as in voltage source there will be no any internal resistance the ideal current source representation is in this fashion we will be having a, a current i we are having a current i and there is there will be no any internal resistance connected to it but for a practical volt current source we will be having a current source and this current source will be having its internal resistance or impedance in parallel with it and then we will be connecting the load over here if you are having a load we will be connecting here this is load similar way for a ideal case this will be the load so this is the uh, basic uh, energy sources that you are having so next we will see about a different type of sources that we are having that is we are having a dependent sources so dependent sources dependent 
sources. So, dependent sources means from the name itself it is very much clear. The source will be dependent upon some of the parameters in the network. So, we will be having a network. So, in that network uh, maybe so many elements will be there. So, uh, the voltage drop across a resistor or the current flowing through uh, some elements it may be dependent upon that source. So, that is called as uh, dependent source. So, dependent source are again classified into various types. The first one is voltage dependent voltage source. Voltage dependent voltage source. Voltage dependent voltage source. So, from the name it is clear that voltage dependent voltage source. So, it is depending we are having a voltage source normally the representation of this type of sources will be like this a diamond shape. So, this is the normal representation that is given for the sources for dependent sources. So, here it is voltage dependent voltage source. So, it is a voltage source. So, you have to mark it as plus minus in that uh, diamond box. So, this is dependent upon the value of this one it is dependent upon some values maybe it is voltage. So, 2 V x where this V x will be a voltage drop in the circuit this will be having a long circuit. So, in this uh, circuit somewhere there will be a resistor or element x. So, the voltage drop across that element that is that is denoted as x V x. So, this voltage source it is dependent on that voltage drop in that element. So, that is why it is called as voltage dependent voltage source where this V x we are having this V x. So, this V x is dependent upon a voltage which is there in the circuit. So, that is why it is called as voltage dependent voltage source. Next second one we are having voltage dependent current source voltage dependent current source. So, from here it is very well understand it is a voltage dependent current source it is a current source. So, the representation for this will be it will be having a diamond shape it is a current source voltage dependent current source. So, this is a current source so you have to mark an arrow mark inside the diamond box and it is the value of this one it is dependent upon a voltage. So, it is a current so current source so we can tell it is 2 V x. So, this is a current source. So, this current source it is dependent upon this voltage V x. It is dependent upon this voltage V x where this V x will be a voltage drop in some areas of the network. This will be a long network it will be connected interconnected each other. So, it is a network. So, this V x will be the voltage drop somewhere in the network. So, this is a current source that current source is depend upon the voltage V x. So, this type of voltage source is called as voltage dependent current source. Next we are having current dependent current dependent voltage source. So, current dependent voltage source it is from the name itself current dependent it is a voltage source. So, voltage source will be normally denoted in this manner it will be a diamond and inside we have to put plus minus. So, it is a voltage source. So, this is a voltage source. So, this voltage source it is dependent upon the current say we can tell it is a we are having 3 I x. Suppose this value of this voltage source is 3 I x. So, you can see this I x is the current that is flowing in this network somewhere in the some long distance. So, this I x this voltage source is depend upon that current. So, when that current is changed the value of this voltage source will be changing. So, that is why it is called as a current dependent voltage source and the last one is it is current dependent current dependent current source from the name itself it is a current source. So, 
so it is represented in this way diamond box you have to put an arrow mark so this is the circuit it will be connected to interconnected to all the elements in the system so this value of this current source it is dependent upon the current itself it is a current source again it is dependent upon the current ix 3 ix so this ix will be the current that is flowing somewhere in the network so that current if it is changing then this value of this current source will be changing so this type these are the basic things that you have to know for understanding the uh, circuits and networks so next we will enter to our topic that is the first module basically we are having the theorems network theorems network theorems so this network theorems it is uh, actually it is used for different purposes there are several theorems out of which we are having only we are having the superposition theorem in our syllabus thevenin's theorem is there norton's theorem is there maximum power transfer theorem so these are the theorems that we have to analyze in our uh, first module so first we will go for superposition theorem super position theorem so superposition theorem actually uh, the, the the statement normally in the examination you will be having three mark question so for three mark question the statement of superposition theorem may be asked so in that case you have to you should be able to uh, state it properly what is superposition theorem so i will just give the statement as in any linear network containing two or more sources in any linear network containing two or more sources the overall response at any point in the network is equal to the sum of responses of each individual sources considered separately with all other sources made inoperative so inoperative means it is replaced by their internal impedances that is the basic definition uh, or basic statement of superposition theorem so this statement clearly states that if you are having a, a linear network a linear network is there in that linear network if you are having several sources maybe current sources maybe voltage sources whatever may be the sources if number of current sources or voltage sources are there in the uh, network then we have to consider that sources individually and we have to find the response where uh, response is required so after uh, completing that source we have to avoid that one and we have to consider the next source likewise if n number of sources are there we have to find separately for each sources the value of response at a particular point then after that you have to submit or subtract it depending upon the direction of the current flow that is mean by superposition theorem so if you are avoiding other sources how we can interconnect the sources suppose if you are having a voltage source and a current source in a network so if you are if initially if you are considering the current source then voltage source should be avoided so in that case what we have to do is that we have to replace that we have to give a short circuit to the voltage source by keeping its internal impedance over there similar way when we are considering a voltage source and when if you want to avoid the current source then again that current source should be open circuited and you have to keep the internal resistance as such anyway we will see by taking a simple example over here we will take a simple example for uh, analyzing this one let us take a voltage source having a simple resistance let us take in this manner we are having a voltage v this is resistor r1 r2 and this is r3 and let it be i suppose we are asked to find out the current that is flowing through r2 let us take it as il so if you are asked to find out the response through uh, resistor r2 il you have to find out so here you can see in this circuit diagram we are having two sources 
one is voltage source with V volts and another one is a current source with I ampere. One is with a I with I ampere. So, these are the two sources that is there in this circuit. So, according to superposition theorem, what we have to do is that we have to consider any one of the sources initially. So, let us consider volt V volts by neglecting the current source I. So, in that case, we, we can see that current source. So, in step 1, we will see step 1, we will consider consider V volts by open circuiting open circuiting I ampere current source. So, the circuit will be so the circuit I am reducing the circuit in this way will be having resistance R1 and here we are having resistance R2 and here we are having resistance R3 and this current source we are open circuiting. So, you can see that we are having a current source over here. So, this current source you can see in this circuit we are open circuited. So, this is V volts. So, this will be the condition. So, let us take the current that is flowing through the resistor 2 as I L dash in this case. So, how to find out I L dash? So, this is a simple circuit. So, directly if you are having an open circuit over here that indicates that uh, that indicates that this entire branch is eliminated. It is not there. That indicates that that entire branch is eliminated. So, in this we will be getting the diagram, we can reduce the diagram as a simplified diagram, we will be having R2, R1, V. This is simplified and the current that is flowing through R2 is I L dash. Now, directly we can find what is I L dash. So, from this circuit I L dash will be equal to according to Ohm's law I is equal to V by R. So, we will be getting V divided by R1 plus R2. So, this is the current that we are getting when we are considering the first source voltage source by eliminating or by neglecting the current source. So, I think it is clear. Now, in the second case what we are going to do is that now in the second step we are going to consider current source. In the second case we are going to consider current source by short circuiting the voltage source by short circuiting the voltage source. So, in step 2, step 2 consider consider current source I amps by by short circuiting by short circuiting V volts. So, we will be having the circuit as in this fashion. So, we are making a simple short circuit over here we are having a voltage source initially. So, that voltage source is short circuited this is R1 this is R2 and this is R3 and the current flowing through this let us take it as I L double dash. So, this is the circuit now when in the second step when the voltage source is short circuit or eliminated. So, in this case according to according to the current division rule the current flowing through R2 by current division rule by current division rule I L double dash is given as what is current division rule in the last class we have seen what is current division rule. So, current division rule is net current this is I amps. So, net current that is I multiplied with these two are the parallel combinations. So, multiplied with R1 divided by R1 plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So, this is called as I L double dash. So, what, what is the directions? In this case, the current direction is downwards. 
in the previous case what you are getting again the current direction was downwards here also the current direction was downwards the both the current both the cases when we are considering voltage source alone we are getting the this is the current value and that is flowing downwards in this model and if we consider the second source alone that is current source again we are getting the current that is flowing in the downward direction so since both cases the currents are flowing in downwards the net current net current net current il will be equal to il dash plus il double dash so this will be our final answer so here you can see initially we are having two sources so in in this two sources what we have done we have considered only voltage source in step 1 by avoiding or by eliminating the current source i so if you want to eliminate the current source we have to make a open circuit so in this diagram we have making that is a open circuit so this entire branch which is marked in red color will be eliminated so the circuit can be simplified in this way and from this diagram we will be getting the il dash will be equal to v divided by the sum of the resistors and the current is flowing downwards the direction of current is marked in the bracket and in the second case we are considering only the current source by avoiding the voltage source so if you want to avoid the voltage source what you have to do you have to make a simple short circuit where the voltage source was there so here we are making a simple short circuit so the diagram became in this model so in this one we have to find out what is il double dash so these two r1 and r2 are connected in parallel here so since these two are connected in parallel we can see that for parallel connection by current division rule we can get il double dash is equal to net current i into r1 divided by r1 plus r2 that is also flowing in the downward direction you can see this is also flowing in the downward direction so both cases the currents are flowing in the downward direction when they are considered individually so the net current in the overall circuit can be calculated from here that il dash plus il double dash il dash was the current flowing through the resistor r2 when we considered only the voltage source and il double dash was the current that is flowing through the r2 resistor when we considered the current source so this will be the final answer for the superposition theorem i hope it is understood and if any clarification you can ask and today we will wind up over here in the next class we will have a more complex problem related to superposition theorem thank you